Fantasy Packer Nation. Welcome to another episode of Packcast, the podcast where you don't have to be Packers fan. But it sure does help. I'm your host, Tom. It's beanie season. Grassy. And here we are. Another Tuesday with the legend himself. The man who's making all the moves. He's got the greatest Twitter header on the planet. Absolutely. That's right. Your future <clears throat> Fortnite champion. Future. Because it's already written. It's already it predestined. Is. The legend, Kurt Benker, joins us again today. Appreciate you having me. Appreciate Kurt. it. Appreciate it. So Kurt, appreciate uh, the Fortnite thing, I'm going to... Uh, so there's like two There's two main events. You have to come top 10 in the first one. Yeah. And I'm going to probably finish like third or fourth place because I'm not playing Fortnite anymore. Okay. I've already put in my time. But once I get to LA for the main event, that's where it's all going down. And that's, that's where I'm going to bring him. Yeah. That's, that's the main event. Now, I mean, mm-hmm. yeah. So right now, I mean, like, because you're invested. We got Halo oh, out right dude. now. We got dude. Vanguard out right now. Yeah. Have we ditched Vanguard and like go to Infinite? Like, is that? Yeah. Yeah. Did I just ranked playlist, man? Like, I need that competitiveness. Like, I, I, I just, I run on it. I, got I can't, I can't just like play casually anymore. I need. Hey, ain't, ain't no joke. We ain't no scrubs here. We, we, no. We're not going for no casuals. No. We'll, uh, we'll talk about it. But Kurt, it's been a little bit uh, since we had a conversation, since we were able to chat. Played a couple of games a uh, this past Sunday. Yeah. Heartbreak City, buddy. Yeah. Heart we've Break City. We've had our fair share on the other side of that, though. So it's, I don't know. I think sometimes those games, like all the little details that are missed in wins, like that could be not necessarily fixed, but like could be improved on. Like yeah. those things get uh, put under magnifying glass when you lose. And I think sometimes it's good to have those things happen uh, this late in the year. So that's my synopsis. I mean, so Matt LaFleur basically came out, I think it was the week prior, and basically said that, you know, the football team's tired. It's it's a longer season. You yeah. have an incredibly late bye. It's a week 13 bye. Yeah. Kind of give me, like, the overall mood. Is it like, <clears throat> hey, you know, let, let's go week to week, but, man, we need to make it to that bye week so we can give our bodies some rest? Yeah, I think it is uh, whoever's available, whoever's – He's ready to go. Like we just got, we don't know what the lineup's going to look like each week. We got a lot of injuries that are long term, short term. Um, you just, you have no idea what the the team is going to look like week to week. And we're like, all right, whoever, whoever's available, let's go. Let's let's buckle up and go try to get a dub. Um, and we've done a hell of a job of that. I mean, I, I think like our injuries are really piling up compared to some other teams, and we've had a lot of adversity. And to be what eight and three at this point, like, yeah. I think a lot of people would be shocked if you look back at the beginning of the season like oh they're eight and three with the roster they have right now available so yeah i, think, I mean uh, it's pretty cool it the biggest thing is not even the loss from sunday but it is the loss of elton jenkins uh mm-hmm. out for the year with, with mc i know you're close with jenkins you know and and having some times uh, on the video games but i mean like for that mm-hmm. a guy who's so versatile roger spoke about this the floor spoke about this yeah. you know you have you have guys who are going to be like the next man up mentality. Um, but is it kind of just like getting frustrating to the point? It's like, we're waiting for Bakhtiari to come back or now like we lost Jenkins. Like we just want to see the team at like full strength. And it just seems like every week there's just another yeah. injury piling up. I think that's kind of like the reality of the NFL is like, you just, you have this ideal like version of your team and yeah. it's never going to be there. And I yeah. think every year is just a, a humble reminder that like, yeah, you might be getting someone back, but someone's going to go down, and that's just the nature of the game. And um, I think that somebody like Elgie going down is a little bit different because he's the guy that, like, can play well at all five O-line positions across the board. So, like, yes. he was your – not just your next man up, like, swing guy. He was, like, your stud swing guy that could play center, guard, and tackle. Yep. And that's a tough one. That's a tough one to replace um, versatility-wise that uh, people are just going to have to step up. And for you, you know, because obviously out on COVID protocol, yeah. coming back, uh, how did it feel kind of just to be back in the building physically? Oh, man. Walking back in there with your dude. iPad, and you're just like, listen, the champ is here, everybody. Oh, dude, I was back. I was all the way back. I was already letting the defense know during the week. Like, <laughs> oh, man, I was letting them have it. So we, we did, it. It, was a, it was a fun week. Dude. I got a lot of, yeah, a lot of really cool plays from this past week. But uh, it's it's just fun. Like, I go in every day, and I just try to bring a different juice that, like, yeah, I'm on practice squad, but, like, I don't walk around like I'm on practice squad. Yeah. And the guys know that. And, like, I'm going to keep them on their toes at all points in time. Like, I spent a lot of time in the defense uh, from walkthroughs, like, all day and, and all that other stuff. So they know they know the juice that I bring and, and what I try to help them accomplish and stuff. So I feel like their success is my success in a way. There you go, man. That's it. I love it. <clears throat> in terms of kind of going forward, 
Mm-hmm. So we've talked about a guy by the name of Equinemia St. Brown, who we've talked about chilling on the practice squad a lot this season, but lately yep. been getting some game time and uh, been turning some heads. I mean, yeah. like he's, he has those big plays. He had him against Minnesota in which mm-hmm. he's getting opportunities when he like is able to get those opportunities. Yep. He's excelling, you know, yep. as a guy who's working closely with EQ kind of like, what yeah. what's that that there has to be like some kind of pride that's associated yeah. with it as well oh dude like i i love seeing that shit because like people try to discount you for being on practice squad and it's like sure. i'm doing the same shit as everybody else i'm just getting paid a lot less and that is it <laughs> i show up for game day i i don't dress there's like a handful of inactive guys that are on the 53 i have the same job as them i just don't get paid as much but yeah. like we're all ready to go like it doesn't it's it's definitely next man up like chomping at the bit for for guys like us and to see like eq going ball out and there's been a lot of practice squad guys like in general across the league like taylor heineke wasn't even in the league last year yep um like it's those types of stories and seeing guys have success is just like a fresh reminder like hey there's there's a bunch of us like we can do this uh we're just not needed right now yeah i mean and and you and i've spoken about this is that like it's not like you're just like twiddling your thumbs being like oh hi like let me do that you're doing you're doing everything else and if anything this is a great opportunity to potentially go win a championship, what have you. But this is also preparing you for your next step, whatever it's going to be. Yeah. And I actually had someone ask this a few weeks ago. You see kind of like week in and week out, you know, there's people that are protected on the practice squad yeah. and your name is constantly coming up as yeah. being like protected with that. Yeah. Is that kind of like a sense of like, I'm doing a good job because, you know, you're not yeah. going anywhere? It is. I think for me, like one of the most frustrating parts about that is that with the new CBA, um, when COVID protocols and all that stuff happened, yeah. they ele- or they adjusted the practice squad roster to being four more um, spots. Yeah. So typically in years past, if you were the third string quarterback, but on practice squad, you would still be able to negotiate your salary to be making active money on practice squad. Uh-huh. When they added the four players, you can no longer negotiate your salary. So in prior years, that would mean that I'd probably make close to active money on practice squad. But now with the new CBA, I can't. I'm making my stated minimum and it is what it is. Like there's no sure. like it's one of the like, I don't know, I feel like it's one of the few professions where like you can't like negotiate what you're making or whatever. Like I don't yeah. know. That's that's the weird part for me. That so it's like a pat in the back and then but it's also a reminder of like if this was like five years ago, it'd be in a lot of different position. Yeah, but you make it is money. what it is. Like, I know that they like me here, and I'm I'm bringing I'm bringing it every day. Like, I'm ready to play. Like, I'm the starter. Like, I study my ass off, and I'm always ready. But it just it's the position you're in right now. Because if I'm not mistaken, the way that it's worded is that like if you're in the league, what is it like zero to three years, you make a certain minimum, and then is it yeah. after three years you make another minimum? Yeah. So like I'm three games away from having a higher minimum, but I, like I'm three games on the fifty three away from having a higher minimum. So I'm just gotcha. like, I'm just like. This is so close. I'm very, very close. Um, but I'm not. And is that like, this season or like in general? Like you're just saying in general. Like if I just play like in the next three years, if I play one game each season, like I get that. Uh, three. It would have to be three games in one season. So like if I get yeah. pulled up for three games at all this year, I get my pension, and so that's huge. I get health care for five years after I'm done playing. For yeah. My family, and then I also would have a higher minimum on practice squad if I were to be put back on practice squad. So gotcha. it's, I'm very close to like the next step up in my like quote career, but yeah. obviously like long-term, I just like, I want to be a backup. I want to be the number two one day. And yeah. then I want to obviously want to play. Like, that's why we do this. So of course, yeah. so it's, just I mean, a, it's a stepping, it's like a ladder. Just got to climb it. <laughs> that's it. I mean, I know that we talked about kind of like you're happy, you know, Aaron's back and all that stuff. There was kind of like that bittersweet. It was kind of like, I wish, you know, the, the timing was just off, you know, yeah, both of you timing. guys getting COVID, the yeah. boat coming back, uh, the boat coming back. <laughs> he's boat. like, thank you for the money. And then he's like, all right, I'm, I'm out now. He's going to go back Quick. and do what he's got to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was the timing of it sucks, but like, that's, that's one thing that I've definitely learned to like, just kind of take those on the chin. Like I've had yeah. untimely injuries. I've had also things work out in my favor. And this is just one that like uh, two weeks, like it didn't work out in my favor, but I'll have something around the back end that come that comes out and, and works exactly. well. So it's a long game. Yeah, that is very, very true. And in yeah. terms of kind of looking at the landscape of the NFL, and I'm curious on just like a player's perspective, mm-hmm. the parity that's in the NFL this year is like insane. Like you yeah. look at teams that are like in the top three and like everyone's consensus power rankings and they all lose, right? Yeah. Like it's it's wild. Or you have like yeah. Colt McCoy going out like you know and and being able to defeat a divisional rival or like the bills getting blown out by the Colts, yep. jonathan taylor you know getting five touchdowns 
for you, is it kind of just speaking to that old mantra of like, it's any given Sunday? Yeah. Is it there's something different about this season coming out of a COVID year? Like, do you attribute it to just like a whole bunch of things? Um, I, if I could say it, like the first thing that comes to my mind is uh, like the lower cap space maybe has a play in it. Okay. So I, I don't know. I think like, so teams have had to be a little more strategic about their rosters and mm-hmm. I don't know. I think somewhere down the line, there's going to be a study done on like how cap, how, how cap space influenced the season. I don't have all the answers for that yet. Okay. But I think there's a lot of like weirdness to this year that there's not just like the top, top dogs. And then like everyone else is like way below. There's just yeah like anybody, any single week. And that's like, typically like, it feels like that in the NFL, but like the really good teams find a way to win by seven or three. Every Correct. Week. But that's like, not, that's not this year at all. And it feels, it just feels weird. So like even this this last week, like we we felt like we were gonna win the game, obviously. Like even during the game, we were down and we're like, oh, we got this. Like it's there's no flinch. Like yeah, it didn't matter. Like we kept fighting back and we were like, oh, it's gonna take it down to the end. We win these close games. And you just don't. Like you just didn't win that game and yeah, that stuff happens. But I think um there's like injuries are always a big part and and there's just I don't know. I think that I don't know, it's it's just been a weird year, man. <laughs> it's been weird. I mean, you look know, at us, it, we're eight and three. Like, and we have how many of our all pro players are not playing? Correct. And we're eight and three. Yeah. So had you started the year without those all pro players, like maybe, maybe that's part of it too. Teams have had to be really creative because of the cap space with the reserve guys that aren't necessarily like starters from the beginning of the year. And so you're seeing what teams have built a lot of depth that are now having to rely on that depth as the year goes on quicker. It's been a crazy year for injuries across the board, I think. Oh, 100%. And it, it's it's interesting because you look at the Minnesota game, and I know at this point, like, you've looked at the tape and, and all mm-hmm. that great stuff. You know, the first half, uh, besides, like, that last drive right before the half, the offense was kind of, like, stagnant a bit, like, wasn't, you know, mm-hmm. getting out to a slow start, which is kind of was happened last week, too, except it, like, lasted three quarters. And, you yeah. know, props up to the Vikings defense and the Seahawks defense, you know, because obviously there's, you know, guys yeah. across the from you. You know, what do you attribute it from the talk of like Ra- Rogers talked about this a little bit? I'm like, why the offense was just getting off to that slow start? Is it the fact that like you didn't have Aaron Jones? You know, is it a matter of there was just so many pieces missing, or is yeah. it just like credit to the defense? Defense, man, it's you. We have such a unique skill set on our offense that it's hard to predict week to week what the defense is going to do. You can you can game plan for what these teams traditionally do. But sure. every week it feels like these defenses are doing something pretty pretty different or sl- like slightly different or a variation to what they would play the, the run of the mill team. Yeah. So like they have specific plans for when they play us because of Devontae and like stud guys like that. And we ran into this some in Atlanta where like you'd be game planning all week. This is what this team does all the time. But since you have a superstar at receiver, they play you differently. So then you sure. get more too high in certain situations where like their, their percentages of what you study every week, yeah. like we know third and 10, third and seven to 10, or so 10 plus seven to 10, like, like three, two to five. Like we know what those statistics are each week, like for every situation. I mean, that's what we study all week. Yeah. But like when they jump into something that is not characteristic because of something that you do, you have to kind of feel out what are they trying to do to you without making mistakes too. Cause like, those types of like keys that we get and stuff, those could very well turn into interceptions. If you're just going through it, oh, I know they're going to be in this because it's this percentage. Sure. Like, so there is a little bit of a feeling out to it, but also trying to keep our identity that like, let's be honest, like we're eight and three and we haven't played our best ball yet. So that's pretty exciting. So as an offense, even though we lost yesterday, it was nice to see like our last, what two plays were touchdowns. Yeah. I mean, MVS so, just getting a bomb. <laughs> yeah. So like our last two plays were touchdowns. We started rolling late. Like, that is what you want to see out of a team heading into December and sure. like late November. And like there's silver lining in that. And then there was also like, Hey, the, the offense had our number on defense yesterday or yeah, it was yesterday. Yeah. They had our number. Like we had our opportunities. We had a few interceptions that we didn't get and like some penalties that didn't go our way and, and all this yeah. and that. But like our defense very well could have made that at like a 17 point game with a few plays that had gone our way. Sure. So offense, picked it up defense has things to adjust on and get back to what they're doing. Like it's a, I would say that's a good loss. Like just it's, it, it was an encouraging loss at a, at a good time in my opinion. Yeah. Well, it's, it's interesting. Cause like you go back to like the saints game in week one, right. And you're like, all right, this is a team that usually like there's a ton of pressure and what have you. And then there was almost no pressure virtually yeah. like the entire game. Yeah. So you're talking about like, it's, it's a week to week league, but also for the defense too. And saying like, yeah. here's how we're going to scheme it up and play against these guys. Yeah. yeah. People are playing us different, man. Like 
Like we have such a unique skill set. And then you have a guy like Bobby go down that like alters coverage. And like, yeah. you just don't know, especially when you have all these injuries, you don't know how these teams are going to adjust you each week. If you could just say, Hey, these are our guys this week. And we know what it's going to be every week. Yeah. Like it'd be, it'd be easy, but that's why these coaches get paid a lot of money. And, and they put us in the best position to think what the defense is going to do and how we can attack it and still stay true to what we do. Yeah. So, I mean, it makes sense. I mean, it's just, I think it stings a little bit much because it is the Minnesota Vikings. Yeah. And it's just, Hey, we got to, we got them another time this year and in, in, in a better place. And, and, it is a much people, better place. People do not want to come to Lambeau late in the year. That is a fact. And in January. Yeah. I mean, I'm already I'm already walking into the building with, with shorts on and flip-flops when it's eight degrees out. Like I don't I'm ready. Yeah. Like, I'm 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 building my mindset. We've not got that. It's, we've it's we've been acclimated already. It's a like, 10 second rocking. walk, but I'm getting ready. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, yeah. that's it. You know, it's just it's it's a mindset. And if someone's walking in with like flip-flops and uh and shorts, can't you can't mess with me, man. I, no. I walked my dog yesterday with no shoes on. Took yeah. him outside, walked on the concrete, just I, I soaked it in. It is what it is. That's Eight it. Degrees it's, with the wind chill. Just getting game time, baby. Getting game yeah. time ready. That's what yeah. you mean by listen, I prepare like a starter. Hey, why do you think I play so much Halo? Because I'm just dialed in. I gotta get the aim right. If I'm not no, that, sitting on the couch watching Netflix, I'm not I'm not dialed in. I'm just no. I'm always leading the receiver, whether it's a Halo Spartan or my guys with a football, it doesn't matter. I'm always like that's that. it. It's always happening. I mean, it just, I'm sorry. I know we're talking about disappointment a little bit, a lot, but you know, <laughs> yeah. you showing up on the sideline with a Master Chief uh, Spartan armor would have been amazing. I know we had to get rid of it, right? It would have to... been so awesome. I want a legitimate one. I want Halo to just reach out to me. They tweet at me a bunch. Yeah, why are they Halo. not? I want them to send me a legitimate, like, whatever they use in this new TV show coming out. I want that. Yes. I want that. I want yep. that copy of that. Yep. They're like, that's three hundred thousand dollars, and you'd be like, I can wait. Yep. <laughs> do you? I'll wait. Do you Give me a few years. It's just a payment plan. Do we have a? Yeah. Do we a firm? Do we can you can you pay for this with a firm? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like, listen, guys, I can time. get you great tickets. Yep. <laughs> you know where yeah. Jordan Love's parents sat uh, in Kansas City? Yep. It'll be better than that. I exactly. promise. Exactly. It, it'll be better. Um, in terms of kind of looking ahead at the Rams game, so mm -hmm. this is. You know, you lose Elton. Bakhtiari is not going to be back until at least after the bye. Yeah. Um, you're taking a look at this, and you're going up against a Rams team who a little bit down on their luck right now, but coming out of a bye has one of the best D lines in football. Yeah. Um, kind of what is the mentality in trying to prepare for a team that has that dynamic skill set and those dynamic players on the other side of the ball? Yeah. Well, we'll uh, we'll definitely get to the game plan tomorrow. That's like tonight we kind of get stuff, and tomorrow, but I would imagine there's going to be some chips uh i'd imagine there's going to be some get the ball out quicks yeah and uh you pick your shots when you want to sit back there in the pocket for a while so that's that's typically whenever you play a team like this man you know like you got a big you got a dude on the on the whiteboard that's circled like yeah. you don't even have to circle him you know who the hell that guy is yep um and they got a few guys up front that are pretty good so it's going to be interesting to see like what our plan of attack is and stuff but um i feel like aaron's aaron's had a lot of success against guys like that and, and finding ways to sure to manipulate what they do um, as their strengths to uh, kind of benefit us. I think there's also like an additional add on to this because of recent events with Odell Beckham Jr. Who, mm -hmm. you know, you know, chose what was right for him, but yeah. uh, it was just the weather, man. That's all he chose. <laughs> he just chose the he's weather. Like, listen, LA weather, Green Bay weather. Meanwhile, yeah. Kurt's walking around with like no shoes and he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm built for this now. <laughs> that's it you yeah. go play you know sometime down the future you go play for like a warm weather team and you're like what is this i don't oh, know dude. this is not gritty <laughs> no absolutely not this is this is joke football here yep <laughs> i love it and in terms of kind of the overall mentality of the team you know you're sitting at eight and three you know you got one more game until the bye week uh yeah. must be looking forward to that very much so this team is still in contention for the number one seed yeah. um and i think that it is very possible if you're able to get healthy, get some of those all pros back, mm -hmm. you know, you are able to potentially clinch home field advantage. You know, you have the tiebreaker over the Cardinals, yeah. with big playoff implications coming <clears throat> against the yep. Rams. Is that kind of the consensus in the locker room too? It's like, listen, we have it all out in front of us and it's, oh, yeah. it's basically in our lap. We, the Cardinals need to lose one game and we need to yep. win out. And like, it's yeah, we, I mean, we know that like, if we just play on all three sides of the ball to the best of our ability or damn near close at the same time where it's not an offensive week or a defensive week or a special teams week, yeah. all three at the same time that 
we're going to be a really tough team to play. And we're already a tough team to play when we don't do that. So like, sure. If we can, if we can put all the pieces together and click and get hot at the right time, that's, that's what you hear a lot. Like looking at years past the teams that win the Super Bowl aren't necessarily the teams that were the best throughout the like the course of the year. It's the December and January teams. Yeah. And, and that's, that's what is encouraging that we're already at this point And we don't even feel like we've been playing like that well, but we, we have been, but like, we know what we're capable yeah, it's of. Crazy. So, it's, so it's pretty exciting that like, just stringing together a bunch of wins and, you know, you have an occasional loss, loss here and there, but like we're not even close to like tapping into what we feel like we can be. So that's the exciting part. And like, it's yeah. going to be a fun, fun one down the stretch and we know we can be in the driver's seat for this. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a matter of, even if you don't get home field advantage, which is obviously the goal, you know, yeah. it's, you know, I don't oh, think anyone's going to want to play the green Bay Packers come no, January yeah. in the playoffs because they know that they're in for a fight. Yeah. Like you, first off you know no one wants to come to lambo like that's no. a fact and so there's one thing and even if not like it's not the end of the world but teams like we're a team that people won't want to see like yes yeah. yeah especially in lambo so let's <laughs> hope it's in lambo and if it's not it doesn't matter we're gonna strap up and, and take the show on the road done get it done yeah. kurt i appreciate it as always buddy no doubt, coming man. in coming through prepping my man's walking around with shorts no shoes and lambo mm. and it's just uh Make it happen. But it, where can they find you and all the things that you do? Oh, man. Kurt Ben Kurt across the board. Twitch, TikTok, Twitter especially. That's a fun one. And Instagram. Right. So go show some love. That's it. That's it. Rocking the quick trip beanie. Oh, I yeah, mean, dude. Has... Oh, wait till you see the sweater. Wait oh. till you see the sweater. Hashtag quick trip partner. <laughs> That's it's it. Wild. Don't don't Never thought I'd ever partner with a gas station. But it's more of like a... No, it's just a delicacy. It's not even a gas station. It's just a delicacy. It's not. No, it's yeah. as Matt Ramage would say, it's a way of life. It's exactly. A, it's, a, it's a way of life. Exactly. But folks, thank you so much for watching. I'm Tom Grassi. And as always, go back, go. Go back, go.